So listen, the rumors are true. There are college majors out there that are both easy and they also lead to high paying jobs. And if you pick the right major, you can actually enjoy your college experience, not be stressed out all the time, and then afterwards get a high paying and fulfilling job. And that's why today I'm gonna be revealing the seven easiest college majors with high pay. And I'm also gonna be talking about why they have high pay. So not only will you know seven good ones, but you're also going to recognize other opportunities as well, just in case one of these don't fit your personality. Because when you choose a career using this simple framework I'm gonna lay out in this video, you're gonna be 10 times more likely to choose something that is gonna pay you well and is also going to make you happy. And I'll let you in on a little secret. 40% of people drop out of college. And of the ones that finish, 50% of them regret it. So that means college is a disaster for over half the people who go. But that won't be the case for you as long as you follow along. And number seven on the list is going to be one that is incredibly valuable in the modern world because it's going to deal with data. That's right, with the rise of big data, companies are looking for people who can sift through all of that information and make sense of it. And if you think about it, data is incredibly valuable. So I'm a fan of chess, for instance. And who do you think is more likely to buy a chess set, right? So let's say a company is spending a million dollars to advertise a chess set, right? Who's more likely to buy something? Somebody whose viewing history is full of Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura videos, and they've been watching a bunch of Gotham Chess or Agad Mator videos. And it also shows that they're a fan of the show, The Queen's Gambit, or somebody who has never watched or played chess before. Obviously, it's going to be the person who has been interacting with chess. And this is exactly what data is going to tell you. In one case, if the company spent a million dollars on somebody who's never or interacted with it, they probably would lose like $900,000. And in the other case, if the company spent a million dollars on people who are chess fanatics, they'd probably end up making two or three million. So this is the power of data, and that's why it's more valuable than oil or gold. Now, the average salary of a data analyst at the entry level is gonna be around $70,000, according to Glassdoor, which is fantastic. Now, the reason I put this one as being easy is because I have personally coached clients to get into data analytics in less than a year. Now, if you you chose to go to college, the degree you'd get is probably going to be statistics, but at some universities, they do offer data analytics specific degrees. And now obviously, if somebody's able to get into this and learn all the skills necessary in six months to a year, you can definitely do it in a four year degree much more easily. Now I know some people out there are thinking, Shane, data analytics is not easy, statistics is not easy, and the reason you came here is because you wanted a relatively easy degree. Now the truth is, some opportunities out there are going to be better than others, but there's nothing out there that's going to be like an easy button where you just push it and you have a fantastic job. No. You're gonna have to have a little bit of patience and you're gonna have to put in that hard work in order to reach your goals, right? So I'm sorry, but on this channel, I'm not gonna give you like fake motivational content with Subway Surfer in the background. No, you're gonna have to try a little bit. So some of the pros here are going to be high demand. So this is a rapidly growing field with high demand for skilled professionals. Another great thing is high pay. So the salaries here are going to be fantastic. Even at the entry level, it can be $70,000 plus, but down the line, you can make a lot more than that. Then there's varied job opportunities. So data analysts can work in a variety of industries. So just about every industry out there is using data analytics from healthcare to finance to of course technology. Another thing about data analytics is it's gonna let you see the value of tapping the like button on videos that are well researched and give you a ton of value like this one. Nice. Now, some of the cons here are you do have to learn extremely technical skills. So you have to have a very specialized skill set in order to get into data analytics. And another con is that the technology is rapidly changing. So you might learn some kind of language or framework right now that isn't necessarily what you're going to use five or 10 years from now. So if you're not the type of person who likes to stay up to date on this stuff, it may not be for you. Now, speaking of data, I pretty much autistically studied this stuff like college degrees and careers for the last five to 10 years of my life. And on top of that, I got a doctorate myself, and that's why I know so much about these subjects. And before I get into the next one on the list, which is basically the future of technology, I also wanna say that a lot of the information you hear on the internet about college degrees is really, really bad. It's bull 
But this next topic I'm gonna to talk about is extremely hot and it's one of the easiest, super high paying jobs that you can get into. Companies will be willing to pay you top dollar for this and it's actually related to data analytics somewhat because one big problem that companies have with all this data is they need a place to store it and they need this place to be both secure but also easily accessible by everyone who should be able to access it. And that's where cloud computing comes in. So with cloud computing, you're gonna be working with stuff like AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, Azure, which is Microsoft's cloud platform, and GCP, which is the Google Cloud Platform. And with all the data breaches that you've seen that cost companies millions and sometimes maybe even billions of dollars, it's incredibly important that this data is stored securely. But at the same time, it needs to be available to the people who really need to use it. So this is almost like a catch-22 type situation where it's almost impossible to do. And this is another one where clients that I've worked with have started from scratch and they've been able to get a job in something like six months. Now, this is one where you can get a college major. Some colleges actually do offer cloud computing specialized degrees, such as WGU. But like most technology-related careers, it's something that you don't necessarily have to go to college in order to get into. Now, according to a report by researchandmarkets.com, the global cloud computing market is expected to reach $832 billion by 2025, and it's growing at a rate of 17.5% per year. And according to Glassdoor, cloud computing careers make around $88,000 a year. So the pros here are going to be extremely high demand. This is a very rapidly growing field. There's also very high pay. Flexibility is another pro. So there's a lot of opportunities for remote jobs. And I know that a lot of people who watch this channel want to work either remote or semi-remote jobs. And there's also a variety of job opportunities. So cloud computing is in just about every industry out there. Now this one has the same cons as the last one. So you are going to have extremely specialized technical skills, and it's going to be a rapidly changing technology. So again, if you're not the type of person who likes to stay up to date on this stuff and just be a continuous learner for the rest of your career, this may not be for you. Now, the next one on the list is a noble profession that happens to pay really well. And it's also relatively easy, and I know that I'm gonna get a lot of flack for saying this, because nurses think that nursing school is the hardest thing ever. Well, I hate to break it to you, but it really isn't. How dare you? Medical degrees are not as hard as engineering or mathematics related degrees, and nursing is one of the easier medical degrees. And I can already see the comments down below. There's probably nurses that are just furiously typing right now, but it's just the truth. Like I went to pharmacy school. We were in the same building as nurses. We did a lot of activities together, and sometimes we would even tutor the nurses, and we saw the kind of work they were doing, and it wasn't that difficult. Now you might be thinking, Shane, I'm a guy. Why the heck would I become a nurse? And that makes sense because of about 80% of my audience are guys. But actually, one, there's a much higher demand for male nurses than there is for female nurses. Two, it's 2023, bro. Nobody cares that you're a male nurse. And three, you might actually be able to get a girlfriend when you go to nursing school because there's basically a 10 to one female to male ratio. So there's that. Now, according to Glassdoor, entry-level nurses make about $69,000 a year, and they can make a heck of a lot more than that down the line, depending on the specialty that they go into. For instance, I knew a travel nurse that made around $500,000. So the nursing curriculum is relatively easy, but they are gonna keep you busy. And at the end of the day, you do have to know your stuff because you're gonna be taking care of patients. And that means if you make a mistake, there's going to be real world consequences from it. He's dying! Now, some of the pros here are nursing is in high demand. There's basically been a shortage of nurses for like 20 or 30 years. There's also a ton of job security. So for instance, in recessions, it's been shown that healthcare related careers careers are some of the most stable jobs. They basically don't change at all. There's also lots of opportunities for specialization, which means if you don't like your job, you can probably just switch relatively easy into a different specialty. And on top of that, there's lots of opportunities for advancement. So there's lots of different types of nurse. There's basically nursing at the associate level, bachelor's level, master's level, and even doctorate level. There's some types of nurses like nurse anesthesiologists that make nearly as much as a doctor. And a lot of the time, nurses are the ones that are at the top of hospitals. So they can have those high level positions like president or vice president. And that totally makes sense because nobody really knows a hospital as well as nurses do. Some of the cons here are nursing can be very high stress. It's a super fast paced, hectic environment. It can also be really emotionally and physically draining work. And you have high levels of responsibility. You're dealing with people's lives here. And then of course the government might decide to do a terrible job responding to, you know, a situation like the whole <coughs> cough cough situation. So there's that. <laughs> 
Now the next one on the list is another career that is incredibly common and it's needed in just about every type of business and every type of industry out there. And they are gonna be focusing on tracking money, the ins and outs of money, and you need to know how to use a calculator. But this is one of the most stable degrees and careers that you could possibly get. And of course, I'm talking about accounting. So yeah, it's well known that accounting isn't rocket science. It's not the hardest thing in the world. Probably the most difficult part of accounting is interpreting the law. But other than that, there's pretty much clear guidelines and principles that you follow. And you're just gonna be focusing on basic math and using logic. There's probably gonna be a few pieces of technology that you're gonna need to get relatively good at, like Excel or QuickBooks, but those are not that difficult to learn. Now, there definitely are some more challenging careers that you can go for, and these are careers that are really high paying. For instance, I interviewed Bill Hanna, who is the financial controller on this channel, and financial controller is a super high paying career. You're probably gonna make over $200,000 a year, and it's also going to be a lot more difficult than a basic accounting type job. But with that being said, it's a choice to go down that route. If you want to, you don't have to. So some of the pros here are there's very high demand and it's probably never going to go away. There's also high pay in accounting. It's going to teach you how to manage money. So it's going to teach you personal finance skills that you can use in your real life as well. Some of the cons here are it's very detailed oriented work. So you have to be extremely meticulous and detail oriented with your work. Also during tax season, you're probably going to be working long hours. And let's be honest here, accounting in some cases can be relatively boring. The next one on the list has to do with money as well. And I think it's a little more interesting in my opinion. And instead of focusing on the money that flows in and out of small businesses, it focuses more on the big picture. So it focuses on how money flows throughout countries and the entire world. And of course, what I'm talking about is economics. And this is incredibly important because economics is the lifeblood of a country. Now, this one is technically a social science degree. And social science degrees do tend to be relatively interesting. And not only are they interesting, but they also tend to be a little bit easier as well. But this one has really good numbers. So for instance, economists make about $99,000 a year. So some of the pros here are there is very high demand. Now keep in mind to become an economist, you're typically going to have to get a master's or a doctorate. But even at the bachelor's level, there's lots of jobs for people who graduate with economics degrees. Another pro here is high pay. And another pro is it is truly a super important role in society. And you play a critical role in shaping economic policy and decision making. Some of the cons here are there is a bit of an academic focus. I'll be honest, I think some parts of economics are BS. I think microeconomics is awesome and it makes a lot of sense. And macroeconomics is basically a way of justifying doing whatever you want, aka the money printer go burr. Another con is that it can be relatively limited in terms of job opportunities. Now, the next one on the list is going to teach you about all things tech related. And in my opinion, it's going to be the easiest career to get into in the technology industry. And I've talked about this many times on the channel, but the technology industry is probably the best industry you can possibly work in. There are so many benefits to working in tech from high salaries to job satisfaction to being able to work remote. It really is like the S tier industry to go into. And this college major, which is going to lead to a career path that's relatively easy to get into, is going to be information technology. So on this channel, I've actually interviewed a ton of people who were able to get into IT related roles. One of them was James, for instance, who was in a dead end job as a delivery driver. And he was able to land a role in IT in just a few weeks. And he didn't even have access to a computer. He actually was able to do all of it just by using his iPad, right? So no excuses, guys. This guy had every excuse in the world, but he just decided to do it anyways. So this is one where when you look at the statistics for an IT degree, they're actually really good. But like many different technology related careers, you do not necessarily need the degree to get into it. Now for an entry level role, for instance, information technologist, you'll make around $66,000 a year. So some of the pros here, like many of the technology related degrees and careers is there's high demand, there's high pay, lots of different job opportunities. So if you're able to get into an IT help desk role, for instance, I think that is the easiest way to get your foot in the door in the technology industry. Once you get in, it's very easy to move around to all kinds of different types of roles, but IT is probably the easiest one for you to break into. And it's also extremely flexible. So it's very easy to get a remote job in IT. Some of the downsides are very common with technology related careers and degrees. You have to have a very technical and specific skill set. You also have to adjust to rapidly changing technology and it can be relatively high stress. So when the technology infrastructure breaks down, the company basically comes to a halt. And as the IT person, you are responsible for fixing it as fast as possible. Now, the next one on the list is
is technology related, but it also has a business component to it as well. And it has an emphasis on data. So this is probably one of the best combinations of skill sets out of any college degree that I have ever seen. And this is one of my favorite college degrees. In fact, this is my number one favorite business degree. And that is going to be management information systems. So somebody that I interviewed a few months ago is Antoine from the channel Black Heights. So he got a management information systems degree. I believe he started off in IT. Then he moved to kind of like a logistics type role. Then he moved to cybersecurity. Then he moved to software development. And then he moved to tech sales. And he now pulls in over $540,000 a year. And by the way, the company that he recommends to get into IT as well as tech sales with is called Course Careers. And Course Careers has helped literally thousands of people get jobs at this point. It's a super affordable way to get into careers. It only costs about $450 if you use the $50 off coupon code. And they even offer a free training, which I will put down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. So the pros here are extremely high demand. This is a skill set that basically nobody has. Also extremely high pay. You also have very job opportunities. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a bunch of management information systems graduates making it to like a CTO, CEO, or at least like an executive type role. And the cons are going to be the same ones for all the other technology related careers and degrees. You do have to learn very specific technical skills. And on top of that, the technology is rapidly changing. Although this one does have more of an emphasis on the business side of things. Now, one thing that I commonly see on this channel is people who are trying to get remote or semi remote jobs. And MIS can be a great degree to get one of those careers. But I actually made a tier list that ranks the most common and the best remote jobs from S tier, which is the best to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.